not for that. Um, you know, we started dating, and so he was living in London, and then he moved to Paris. And right after he moved to Paris, um, but two months after we started living together, my mother got sick uh, with cancer. And so Danny uh, didn't speak any French and um, Spanish, I know Spanish, and my mother didn't speak English. But he said to me, you know, she should come and live with us, she should stay with us, and and uh, so she did, and uh, and I took care of her for a year, and then he helped me take care of her. And um, during that whole year, um, he couldn't communicate with her. So what we would do, he was a journalist, but he was, a, he was also a violinist. So he would play the violin for her, and then he digged out um, some kind of recipe, like some Jewish Iraqi recipe, you know, for, like involving pear and chicken and something like disgusting. But he would, you know, <laughs> Cook that for her with, with such so much heart, you know that she first of all ate it, and and uh, you know and and just told me, uh, you know, this is the most beautiful person I've ever met, and this is somebody she couldn't, you know, communicate with with words, um, and that is the other thing I learned from Danny, like the ability to 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 give without expecting anything in return. You know, and when I saw that ability in him, I was, you know, I just felt this is really the person I want to marry, and um, and uh, that's what I did. We, uh, um, but then he was very enthusiastic about it. He said, you know, we're going to move to Bombay, and there's Bollywood, and you know, everybody's going to we're going to be so exotic for them, and they're going to be so excited, and you know, it's going to be great, blah blah blah. And so we moved to Bombay, and um, people couldn't care less. <laughs> about us, you know, <laughs> and it was so difficult. It was just like, you know, everything was such a hassle, like, you know, you would spend, a, I mean, you know, maybe like a week to get an internet connection that worked, and it, it was like a lot of frustration. But it was also probably the most, you know, uh, my, my most endearing memory, because, um, you know, he was mentioning that quote that I think is still very, very relevant uh, today. I think it's probably the best uh, thing I ever heard about love, you know, about this thing about... Um, not looking at each other in the eyes, but looking together in the same direction. And truly, well, that's what I exper uh, experienced in, in Bombay with Danny, because um, you know, we had this really, like we had decided what journalism was for us. We had decided the way we wanted to uh, use journalism in our life. And we wanted to be you know, kind of the ambassador of, a, of, of, of another world. Uh, you know, we wanted to bridge that world. And he meant, you know, at the time he meant just like going through a lot of hassle. And uh, most of the, those uh, difficulties, nobody was ever going to see. You know, so it was just between us and, and um, we could have given up, particularly like cynicism was really easy to, <laughs> to fall into and you know, because it was, it was difficult. Um, but we, you know, we really like supported each other so that we say, no, you know, it, you know, it is possible to be in that, um, you know, to feel like, part of one world, you know, it is possible to communicate, it is possible to create that dialogue, let's just keep going and keep going, and so we did that. And, uh, and truly, you know, it's, uh, it was very difficult, but it was also very, uh, um, it made us, both of us grow so much, and it made us happy. And I think also that's one, you know, I understand also the, the one of the definition of maybe of happiness is what is happiness, you know, and uh, I think living up to your own expectations and the expectations you've chosen for yourself is happiness. Happiness is not, I, th I don't think it's a life devoid of, of problems, you know, that's not what it is. I think we shouldn't be so afraid of problems. We should be afraid of not being able to, um, to have uh, ideals and uh, convictions strong enough that can confront those problems. So, um, so we did, and, and I got pregnant. And um, so uh, just to tell you about, you know, how our little, you know, perception on the world, but I, I get pregnant, and then uh, we felt, you know, how are we going to name our child? And, you know, so my, our son Adam is six years old now, and, and uh, we sat down and we started, you know, listing who, who is he? Because then he having, you know, being Jewish and having this intellectual curiosity ended up with me, you know? <laughs> and it's a fast stretch move, you know, somehow. And um, so Adam, for instance, he's, um, uh, Danny's father was, uh, was born in Poland and lived in Israel, he grew up in Israel. And his mother uh, was born in Baghdad and, um, and then moved to Israel. 
And then my mother was born in Havana. So when I uh, actually met uh, George Bush, you know, and I, he asked me about my origins, and I mentioned, you know, you know Baghdad and Havana, he was like, yeah, who the hell are you? <laughs> it's like, what's that? <laughs> but, you know, and then, uh, and then my father, as I mentioned earlier, was from, he's from Amsterdam, and then, then he was, he's a, you know, was American, and I'm French, and he's Jewish, and I'm Buddhist, and, you know, it was so much fun to just, like, even, like, you know, try to, you know, it's like, what kind of passport are we going to come up with, and he said, well, we can, you know, build a passport, but let's name him after the first man as a, as a wishful thinking for the 21st century, that we can all work together. So that's how he, uh, he got his name, Adam. Um, so, you know, so we started working, and that was very, very close to 9-11, uh, to and so 9-11 happened, and Danny and I were, were in, uh, in India, and, you know, being him being the South Asia correspondent for the Wall Street Journal, the, you know, at the time, nobody knew what was happening, nobody knew uh, where the danger was, and, but it was, you know, clear for most journalists that um, uh, Pakistan was involved in some, in some way. So everybody, you know, flew, I mean, all the foreign correspondents flew to Pakistan, and we did as well. Um, you know, and then he was, um, uh, we were all like, you know, now in world conflicts, excuse me, um, when there's a world conflict, now you have all these journalists um, coming into the same place, right? The, usually the place that has the best uh, internet connections. Uh, you know, that's how it works. And it's very strange now how, how it has become and how the, the media has, you know, the role the media has come to play in the, in the conflicts because, like for instance, in this case, it was the Marriott Hotel. And there was like about 450 journalists there, and they from like you know he went from CNN to like Aztec Radio, and you know just people, and and, uh, and everybody was waiting to get into Afghanistan. And then he didn't want to go into Afghanistan. He said he you know he, he refused to go because he had kind of foreseen what was going to happen, and um, and had um, you know gone to Bosnia like two two years before um, before 9/11 or three years before it was the war. And, um, you know, we work with little satellite phones, right? When there's no connection, we try to connect, and, you know, we keep tra traveling with the satellite phone. So one day he was in a battlefield, basically, in, in, in Bosnia, and, and he called his boss in New York at the Journal. And his boss said, hi, Danny, how you doing? You want to come for lunch? <laughs> And then he was like, well, I'm only in a battlefield right now, you know, and you sent me to that battlefield. And, and, and he was really angry, you know, and, he, and so he wrote a, a very detailed document um, uh, saying that, you know, the, the, the work of journalists has changed a lot and it has become much more dangerous and people needed to be trained, and particularly in case of kidnappings. And, uh, and um, you know, and it's a very, you know, detailed memo called for, for the memo for the safety of journalists. And the journal has has an answer, had an answer to his, his, um, his uh, request to be more trained. So he said, I'm not going to go to the war zone, which was Afghanistan, you know, we thought. I mean, you know, we knew Afghanistan was going to be bombed, so we were going to be attacked. But we didn't know exactly what was going on. So, um, so, so he said, you know, we're not going to go. And then we, we stayed in Islamabad, which is the capital of Pakistan, and, and uh, started working from there. You know, as I said, I was pregnant, and, and uh, we were doing some stories. We were just keeping a low-key profile. And particularly, you know, after 9-11, I think, you know, for me, like, all, all our, you know, commitment, you know, to, to dialogue, to using, you know, journalism as a tool, to bridging this world became much more dire. I mean, I was very aware that, uh, you know, the people who had... Uh, attacked the Twin Towers were exactly displaying the, the opposite message. And for me, it was very... Uh, um, you know, it was very dramatic because I felt, okay, you know, they using terrorism to, 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 to say what they have to say, and we only have words, you know, and, and we have words with a message that people don't want to hear because they'll say, you know, they're attacking us, we're going to attack back, when really the answer to that is, you know, uh, is, is dialogue, and, um, and how, how do we deal with that? So, um, so, but, you know, Danny and I talked about that and we said, well, you know, that's all we can do, but we're going to do our best. So really for us, it was very important to, to report from, from, from Pakistan. And we did that and it was, you know, everything went, went fine. And, um, and then, um, for instance, you know, I'll tell you just an example, but Danny was writing a story and about, you know, how in the Arab world, for instance, there was, there was a rumor, one of those stupid rumors that start war, wars, and that the Mossad, for instance, had you know attacked the the the, um, 
had attacked the Twin Towers, which is ridiculous, but I mean, the, the story was about how people believe that, and you don't need anything to be grounded in reality for people to believe them. All you need is the internet, really, you know, and the website. And, um, but the, the most trouble that he had, you know, was to, uh, to actually publish that story in the Wall Street Journal, because the Wall Street Journal didn't want to offend their readers, you know, a lot of them are Jewish, yet that was the story, you know, that was what was important for people to, to understand is that, you know, this is, you know, a, a mostly uh, illiterate country where, you know, things work with rumors, and if you wanted to do something about that, then you needed to educate people. That's how dire the need for education was. So that was the point of his story, but, you know, it was a multiple front kind of uh, struggle for us to go through and, and, uh, and actually use journalism as a tool.